Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this tutorial, we're going to look have a very basic look at the uh, node editor. And as you can see, I'm using Blender 2.69. This just came out recently. And um, if you don't have the latest version, you probably want to download and get the latest version. But this tutorial will also work all the way back to 2.5, so we should be okay. All right, so looking at the node editor for materials, if we go over to the material tab here and we do a new material, you will probably have an item here. You might not see this. You may see something that says use node editor. And if you click that button, then that'll open up the, uh, the ability to actually change your material into what you need it to be changed. Now this tutorial is, like I say, it's a very basic introduction to the, uh, the node editor. We're not going to get too in depth, but what I do want to do is, is at least give people who are at that level where they're seeing the node editor and they're kind of freaking out like I was when I first went over to 2.5 and started having to create materials with the node editor. And um, just needed some little, you know, some kind of guidance to, to move along with it. So what you do once you hit the, um, you know, use nodes, you want to come over here to one of your windows here and left click on the bottom and choose node editor. And that'll bring in a screen like this. If you don't see any nodes here, just click this box here and you'll see, you'll see the use nodes. And also you want to be on your material one. I'm also planning on coming out with a compositing, an introduction to the compositing editor as well. I mean, compositing nodes. So hopefully that'll come along pretty soon. Also, if you see a menu over here on the left, you can just hit the end key to take that away. Okay, so right now, what we have here is just basically, you know, a, a basic diffuse material. And if you click this, you can actually change this right here. And say if you want it to be glass, you can see it changes right in the editor itself. Or you can change it in the editor window. So I'm going to change this back to diffuse for a second. Okay, and just want to look at the node editor window itself for a little bit. So I'm just going to expand this out so we can see what we're doing. And still have this view over here. And if you select one of the nodes and hit G for grab, you can move it around just like uh, anything else in Blender. You'll notice there's a little line connecting these two and that's called a noodle. And when you think about the node editor, think of this side, everything on this side, the far left being the input and over here would be the output. So what it does is basically run through whatever you put in here and that's the output that you're getting. So one way to think about this, and I was trying to think of a good analogy on how to think about these nodes because when I first started dealing with the nodes it was like I was completely lost. I was trying to plug things in and it just wasn't logical to me how you plug these things in and why I'm coming up with the results that I'm coming up with. Um, the node editor is quite complex or can be quite complex. It can be very simple like this one here. I mean this is a very simple example but it, it can get uh, pretty complex and it's pretty daunting when you look at it and intimidating to somebody who's never never dealt with this this type of um, editor before. So here's my crazy analogy that I came up with. I'm gonna say the the first thing that we're putting in here you know we're making a pizza and the first thing that we're putting in here this is gonna be the dough and this is gonna be the completed pizza and everything in between is the things that we add on the pizza like um, pepperoni, cheese, mushrooms, and all that good stuff. So as you add things into it, that's where you get your final output. Kind of a weird analogy, but maybe it helps somebody to make a little bit of sense out of this. So one thing we can do, if we're okay with just a diffuse shader, and this is called a, a shader by the way, then we can keep this and we, all we need to do is just change the color to whatever we want it to be, and it changes. And that's fine. But if you need something a little bit more complex on your material, then you may need to do some different things. As you've already seen, if we drop this down, we have a lot of different, um, 
I guess defaults you could call them that we could choose from. Or if we go over here, we can do a shift A and we can add those as well from this menu. So if we go down to shader, we'll see all of those here and we can choose glass and we can actually say, okay, I really wanted to change this to a glass. So let's plug this in here and let's get rid of that. And there's our basic glass. And you can do that with any of the those default shaders that you see in there. But say we wanted to do something different. Let me go ahead and X this one out. And let's plug this back in to the surface. Okay, this is our basic, basic diffuse shader. But say I like this shader, but actually I want it to be, I want it to have some uh, shininess to it. I want it some to have some specularity. So I could do a shift A and add a glossy shader. Bring this over here. Now there's no way to plug this in here or in here because if we try to plug it right in there, it's just going to mix us around and that's not what we want. Because that's now going into the volume which is not going to work. So. So let me put this back in here, get rid of that. Another way to uh, cut these noodles also is, is to do in control and just drag a knife across it and that'll cut your connection. Put this back in. So the way that you add these different shaders is you need a mix shader. So I'm gonna do a shift A shader and choose mix shader. And when I move it around, you can see that noodle lighten up if it does that, that means you can just drop it right there and it'll plug it in automatically for you. And then we can take this one and put it into the mix. And then there's our output. We now have some glossiness to our material. And that brings up another point. This factor that you see here. This factor to me is a little bit misleading and it kind of took me a while to get used to it. But basically what it is saying is, depending on how you have these plugged in here, is how much is, it's going to affect it. So if I say this is zero, then it is only going to take effect. It's only going to take this one. It's not going to mix this one at all. And if we put a factor of one, then it's just going to take this glossy material and not the diffuse at all. So it's sort of like a slider. In fact, it is a slider if we slide it back and forth. But the problem I have with this, this slider is it's horizontal. To me, I don't know, my, maybe just my way of thinking, I think it should be vertical. So we know exactly how we're sliding up and down. So here's the way that, you know, you might be able to think of this. If you rotate this, this factor thing, 90 degrees where it's up and down, then you can kind of Think of this as the top and this is the bottom, and you can slide it back and forth. I don't know if that makes any sense to some people. It kind of helps me a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to do a 0.5 to make that in the middle again. And then we can look at the individual settings on the shaders as well. As well. So if we bump this up, of course, as the name says here, we're actually bumping up the... Um, roughness of the material. So you can kind of see what it's doing there. Uh, same thing with glossy, we could bump this up or if we wanted it even more glossy, we could do something like 0 0.02 and then you'll see that it's becoming a, you know really glossy there. And one thing that I will say about these settings, it's not true for all of them, but a lot of them, they are very touchy. So if you're like me and you're trying to make a material and you're sliding things around and you're thinking, you know, why isn't, isn't it getting the type of material that I want? Then keep this in mind. These are so touchy that, you know, like at a point two, you get something like this and, you know, maybe a point zero six or something, you start to see a lot of, you know, a real good glossy surface there. So just keep in mind that you know, these are very sensitive. So you may not want to just drag it across, 
because what I do a lot of the times is I want to see what the spectrum of the change is. I'll, I'll say, okay, I'm just going to make this a one and see what it's doing. Actually, I didn't go all the way to one, but anyway, then go back down to zero and see what it's doing. And a lot of times the settings in between will actually get you a lot different result than what you would think. So just keep that in mind. They're very touchy. A couple of more interesting things about the working in the node editor. Say we want wanted to add something else, uh, shift A, and I'm just going to grab this RGB curve and say I put it right here and I start changing around and trying to trying to make an adjustment and it's just not working out. And I say, well, actually an RGB curve is not what I wanted here. I could just delete it, but that's going to sever this link between the uh, diffuse and the mix shader. So what you can do is do a control X and that keeps that link so you don't have to go back and reroute that. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can mute the different uh, nodes. So if I select this and hit M on the keyboard, you can see it turned kind of red. It actually mutes the effect of this node and you're just left with your uh, material as it is. Now, it's looking kind of strange, you know, different than it did before because we still have this factor at 0.5, so it's pulling in only 0.5 of this information. So we would have to change this back to zero. Or say we did want to keep this, just hit M to unmute that again. So more information about the node editor window, if we go to file and go to user preferences, and go to our themes, I believe it is, and go down to node editor. You can see that you have the different selections here on how they're displayed. You even have noodle curving. By default, it's set at five. And if you change this, you can see they get more straight, depending on what you have this set at. Actually set it up to uh, 10, but five is, usually okay. And of course you can zoom in and zoom out as needed. So that's a basic introduction to the node editor. Uh, I know we didn't get into how to actually make a, a lot of intricate changes to the materials, but if you look, if you do a shift A, you can see that there is a ton of different options here. One of the things that I would suggest is depending on what kind of material you're trying to do, like if you wanted to get a certain look for glass, um, Search for a tutorial that has glass, you know, how to make glass in Blender, but use the cycles parameter in there in your search, your search for that to make sure that they are using cycles and that way you can kind of see how they got their effect on what they were doing. There's a lot of good tutorials out there on that kind of stuff. One thing that you will notice as you're finding more about these, these um, nodes in the node editor is that these things can get pretty complex. So don't you know, just run screaming like I did. I just kind of got overwhelmed with it and thought that, you know, I'd never really understand how these are hooking together. I now have a pretty good concept of what, what, how they work, but just to warn you, it does take some time for that light bulb to go off in your head and say, okay, I'm kind of seeing what they're doing now. So that's one way to learn about uh, different materials that you can create and work in the note editor. Another way is there's actually a library you can download to get different materials and you can bring up those materials and kind of study how they were done. So if we look at this page here, I'm going to put this link down into the description. Um, this is a library that was created by Peter Cassetta for a lot of different common materials. And what you do is you download the zip file and you install it from here. You go to file, user preferences, you go to add-ons, and then you choose install from file, and then you find the path of the um, that download. Now once you have it installed, then you can find it in here by typing in material, and you'll see material, online material library, and you'll want to make sure that it's checked, and that way it'll be available to you. Now, if you don't um, save your startup settings, 
then you'll have to check this box every time you open Blender if you want to use that library. So if you save your user settings, it'll be there the next time you open Blender. And once you have that installed, you'll see this little area here called Online Material Library. Now, one thing about this library that I will warn you about is it is beta. Um, it is, to me, kind of uh, clunky and hard to use, and that may just be the way I'm looking at it. But also, it has a little bit of a bug uh, since Blender 2.67. If you're using anything beyond Blender 2.67, and you should be, then you'll need to download a fix for it. And I'll give you the link to that as well and, and how to get that file. But once you got it installed and everything, you'll see this um, online material library, and you'll have a, different, a few different options. And that's these right here. Bundle library, Peter's library testing, Peter's library release. Uh, the bundle library are the materials that come with the package that you're downloaded. They're already in there. So you don't have to tell it to work online or anything. It's really offline because it's included with it. The testing is for materials that aren't quite ready for to put in the release, so I wouldn't even worry about that area. The release library is supposedly the ones that have been tested and is working okay and all that good stuff. So I'm going to select the um, release. Actually, let's just go to the bundle. Select the bundle library. And if you're not seeing the library, then you can choose reload library. You'll see this message up here that says retrieve library. And then this area right here, when you click that, you'll see the different uh, materials. And say if we click on metals, and we want bronze, then you will see the preview of the bronze there. And since I'm in the node editor right now, you can see all the nodes that were used to uh, use to create that material. So if you're like me, you can kind of look at this and try to, to work it out, you know, reverse engineer it in your mind, see what they did, uh, why they're using different ones. Um, and then if you want to choose a different one, you can come down here, choose Fool's Gold. Uh, this one is you can see how complex these nodes can get. And this is just a material right here. When you get into compositing, they get even more complex and crazy. So scroll down, and here's a galvanized steel material. Just uh, different times, types of materials that you can use here. Now, one thing that wasn't clear to me is how do you get back to the other libraries? Because there's really no option to get there from here. So if you choose this and ch go back to None, then you'll see your options again to use the bundled or release, etc. Now if you choose one of these materials, and let's see if I can find one here real quick. Kind of an interesting material there. And you get this message, then it's one of two things. You didn't download the fix and install it, or you hit a material that has problems with it anyway. Um, and that is the problem with this library. It, like I say, it is in beta, and there's still some that do not work, but that fix actually corrected some of them that would work for me. I mean, none of them would work in the beginning, but when I put the fix in, at least I could get to see you know, some of the um, different materials that were here. Okay, so that is basically it for the note editor. Like I said, I'm going to put the details on how to do this um, library, this material library, in the description. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know that when you work with these materials, you know, when you're first starting out with them and you're using these nodes in the node editor, it's very intimidating. But my suggestion, like I said, just start out slow, you know, start out with something simple, see what it's doing, play around with it, make changes to it, see what others are doing, uh, look at these materials here and, and see how these are put together and that's the way you can kind of start piecing together for yourself how this node editor really works. So thank you for watching. Feel free to leave comments, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.